Hey, hey. So, a uh, quick little video to give you an introduction on the difference between the R4 uh, and the LRT setup that we've been offering on uh, GCMRacing.ca for quite a while now. Uh, and we've made some changes and improvements to fit into our newest truck setups. And so, we've got the new transfer case out called LRT2. And uh, lots of goodness happening there. And uh, we're going to talk about the differences of these two and actually tear them down and rebuild a LRT2 onto the scale transmission so that uh, you guys can see how to do it. It's really simple and uh, hope you uh, enjoy the video. If you have any tech questions at all, please send an email to the store at gcmracing.ca or uh, tinytrucks.com and we will be sure to hook you up with a tech answer as quick as possible have a look at this assembly video here so we're gonna tear into the packaging here and uh, get this built up uh, I want to tell you first thing about the RC four-wheel drive transmission uh, this little fancy unit right here is uh, I'll give you their part number on it here um, there's the part number for RC four-wheel drive scale tranny and uh, this is a great unit. This uh, we've been using a lot of these. They're they run fantastic. Really happy to have them in the trucks. They're reliable. They take a ton of power if you're so inclined. Um, I only know that because Rob uses a lot of power. Um, and uh, they don't break. So paperwork here's the tranny that we're going to use right from RC four wheel drive and we're going to be changing this tail stock right here uh, leaving the housing and the top gear but we're going to change this tail shaft and all that stuff that's there so uh, there's a whole bunch of screws in here and the pinion gear and stuff and this is the uh, equipment that you need to attach it to the motor plate all the way around the tranny at the top here so first thing we're going to do is uh, tear apart this transmission we're going to take apart the tail shaft assembly here so I'm going to take the screws out that go around the outside of the tranny uh, there's four screws on this uh, tailstock housing here and um, come back here so step one take this apart there we go and push the shaft down so that you can pull it up pull the, the housing off there's the uh, bare housing here bearings are out that's important and inside it looks like this so you see there's a double stack of bearings on there uh, right here you need these double stack bearings that's important so we're gonna take off this uh, tail shaft and the little bearing is in the way here so we'll take that off and we'll take this out this entire unit right here is gonna get replaced this entire unit is going to get replaced here with uh, new gear and um, the GCM shafts and gear set that's in our kit. So we're done with this now. I'm just going to put this aside here. Put the housing up here. Move the hardware. Uh, this gear set we're going to keep but I'll put it there. And now what I'm going to do is uh, rip open the GCM kit here. So I should make a note that uh, the uh, LRT2 housing is actually reversible. You can use it as a right drop or a left drop on exactly the same case. Uh, in this case, I already have one built that is a right hand drop. So I'm going to build one that's a left hand drop and then I'll have two uh, ready to go there's only one part number now for the LRT2 
and it runs left or right drop. The old style case that we used to use, the LRT that we originally put out, it had a case specific right or left. Uh, the cases were not the same, they were not reversible. This one is, and you can see why. Because uh, the cases are not mirror image, they're, they're actually different, but they, um, they will accept the screws on the case housing on either side. See? You can put the screws indented into the case from either side, right or left. So, uh, I'm going to open up this center hardware pack here too. And uh, we'll get that out of there. There's a whole bunch of little tiny M2.5 set screws. And um, they, hold the, uh, they hold the spot where the tranny holes are not being, tranny screws are not being used. They have no, uh, no drivetrain function. All they do is plug the holes that aren't being used, these little set screws. And I should tell you this, because this is my favorite part of this whole kit. There are absolutely no more set screws holding the uh, gears on. We converted the entire LRT over to pin drive. Uh, the pin drive setup is far more reliable in so much that you, you take out the user error, okay? I've had no issues with the LRT1 with the set screws coming loose, but everybody knows that pins are better. So our new uh, pin drive stuff is um, has these hardened pins, and the pins run into this uh, hardened gear, and um, there's a pin slot in the gears, and this stuff just can't be beat, that's all. We also eliminated the uh, attachment point on the center gear. The center gear is now one piece. The idler gear is now one piece with the shaft. So you can't mess that up either. Uh, it just takes out a lot of the guesswork. Open up the pins here. Like this. We'll get them on the bench. And the two shafts. So you can see here we've got uh, on the shaft we've got um, pinholes and a output through hole. So no more set screw indents. And that system worked fantastic, but this is totally bomb proof. So, uh, I'm going to uh, get this assembled now, and the first thing we're going to do is put the tail shaft into the transmission case with the new gear on it. So, um, I'm going to put a pin in here in the uh, top shaft, in the output shaft, and you can have a look at how this is set up. So this is the output shaft for the T-case and uh, it has a little tiny pin that sits right here. And the pin is going to go onto the, this position right here. And then we're going to put the output gear on it. The output gear will just slide over top of that and uh, it sits like this. I want you to see that too. So I have to push it down all the way, but you can see that where the pin sits on the gear like that. Okay. So then our, top, our output shaft, our top shaft looks like this. And uh, I have to go get my grease. Hang on. Uh, this is my favorite thing for grease. Um, I like to use white lithium grease in all of my uh, drivetrain. It's not super tacky or sticky or any of that stuff. It's not the factory stuff. It's just regular white automotive lithium grease. And I stick it in this syringe here and then it's really easy to apply. 
So um, this here is going to drop right into the tranny uh, where the other gear used to be. So we're actually taking this out and we're replacing it with this. Okay, we're taking out the short shaft and putting the long shaft in place. And uh, you're going to have to take the two bearings off of the top shaft that was there and then put them onto the new shaft. And so your setup should look like this. You should have a top shaft set up that looks like this uh, with the output. The big output hole for the pin drive is here. And then you need the, the output gear there with those two. And don't forget to put the bearing back on right there and then we can put the output housing back on so that's it I'm gonna put some grease on my gear here and uh, get this lubed up for the long term it's really stiff here today there we go gooey and the output housing goes back on just like that and you will notice right away that the shaft floats up and down that's normal that's a good thing this should float up and down just like that so that's good if it's jammed or too tight or you can't turn it then you have a problem but it should you should just be able to turn that no problem and uh, I'm going to stick my attachment hardware back in here and uh, a lot of guys are using Loctite on these I'm not I don't find there's enough drivetrain vibration on these to even warrant any kind of Loctite I just check them go over them and make sure they're not actually loose when you do your truck install and uh, and then there you go it's pretty easy put this one here we'll tighten that down like that so the output shaft is now in uh, we're ready to install the transfer case on the outside here and uh, depending on if we're going to do right or left drop you need to decide that now and of course it's really easy to change afterwards so we're going to produce a left drop case and uh, get those assembled right there I need to put these four screws in to the case and these are going to go through the case and out the back like this so the uh, come on so the screws will sit out of the case like this and then they screw into the output uh, on the transmission and don't make them tight put them in there nice and loose I'll tell you why in a minute so you get these all situated in here like this and uh, there we go nice and loose little bibbity bob here and there and uh, you can put Loctite on these if you want I don't never did never seen one come out so the case is a little bit loose on there right now but we haven't put the bearing on yet so slide the bearing over and stick it in the case and then you should have this that's what you should have going on right now okay um, that's a good thing to do now if you have a left drop if you're building a left drop like I am you need to put in this screw now so that's why the screws are still loose in the case you need to put in whoops bearing fell out 
you need to put in the uh, the attachment screw for the case parts right there okay just slide it in there and uh, put it in all the way just give it a poke because it actually hits the case okay the screw touches the case right here and so when you have it all screwed on tight it's pretty hard to get it in so put it in now and it won't fall out and then you can tighten down the four screws that hold the T case onto the back of the tranny output uh, housing. And you don't have to go nuts on these, okay? They're just scale trucks. So put those in with a little bit of force just to keep them together. And there we have it. Now, there's a pin, there's a pin shaft hole right there on the output, right there. At the base of the bearing right there, there's a pin hole need to put a pin in there so that's pretty easy right now because there's nothing else in the way so just slide that in there like that there's the pin right there right at the bearing okay and then you're gonna drop in the top gear and the top gear is the big one so take the big gear and put it on top Turn it a little bit till it clicks down, and it should be uh, right at right on the bearing seat. The uh, gear should sit right on the housing there, just like that, right behind the screws. And then you put the next bearing in to the front output. You can put the bearing in here for the idler. You can actually put the idler in. The idler just sits in there. There's the idler gear there. And uh, that's just sitting there. Already has a shaft on it, bearings and everything. And then you're going to put in the uh, output shaft pin first. There's the pin on the gear or on the shaft. Come on, camera. There we go. And then, of course, the uh, small gear with the slide for the pin sits over there. And we're going to slide that on there. So you end up with this here. You've got the gear with the pin in it. And it's on the output shaft for the front axle output. And we're going to slide this into the case here. Like that. And now we've got our three gear set up. And all the pins are driving. So you should be able to see this going around now, and uh, it should be nice and clean like this one. Uh, we got a good tranny, obviously, that's nice. Uh, they're all been good for me. And when you're doing that, you should be able to see the front gear turning in the, in the R4. Now would be a good time to make sure that everything's actually working. And it's working good. So, I'm going to grease this up now. Uh, there's quite a bit of space here at the bottom, so I'm actually just going to jam a whole bunch of gear grease in this bottom space. Right here at the base of the gears. And, uh, and then we'll just let it get its way around there. I'm not going to bother trying to plug all the gears. put a bunch of grease in there like that and we will smear that around a little bit there so I got a huge big wad of grease in that hole there now that should be fine and uh, on the back case we need to put in the three bearings so I'm just gonna drop these in right now uh, you can also put the three bearings onto the onto the shafts if you want, just like that, and then put the case half on if you so desire. And in the typical GCM fashion, the case pretty much just clicks on. Uh, there's a lip that joins the two case halves together, so you end up with this kind of a seamless sort of a thing and of course it's stuffed full of grease which is wonderful 
and there's our setup and now we can attach this center screw right here I'm going to just screw that together until it seats at the bottom with a quarter turn to tighten it up and we're done that's it the case is officially together obviously there's the uh, the gear train doing its job we've got the front output working there doing its job and the only thing left to do is put in these uh, four little uh, screws that plug the holes in the back these are now exposed they're exposed to the gear train inside and you don't want a dirt or water in there so uh, I recommend you put Loctite on these now to seal them and you just thread those in until they're flush mounted like that so I'll go ahead and put the rest of these in and then uh, the drivetrain is ready to install in your truck you can mount a GCM motor plate on it and uh, drop it into your truck if you already have the tranny mounted into the truck then you don't need the uh, the GCM motor plate all you need to do is put the married T case on it and then reinstall the tranny and uh, you're off and running so now what's the point in all this the point in all this is that the case is actually smaller than the old one uh, in every way the case is smaller we put more scale detail on it uh, the case is quite a bit thinner than the old one and the case actually sits t higher off the ground than the old one and uh, the this uh, new LRT2 actually has an overdrive front output so the gearing in the in the transmission goes direct out the tail shaft to the rear axle and the front axle here mounted to uh, the front drive shaft has a overdrive output um, and when you're running K44s which are great or uh, other kinds of scale axles or SCX or whatever that has the same ratio in the front and the back having an overdrive tranny output is really fantastic uh, it really helps for the cornering and uphilling and uh, doing side hilling and I recommend uh, using that this is the only case that I know of that gives you that option to do uh, an overdrive front output so uh, here we go scale drivetrain right and left drop in exactly the same cases you can flip it back and forth as you build, change your builds and uh, we've got a bomb proof LRT2 in store ready for you